I've been using the TFT SPI library for quite some months now, and it's a very powerful library. I've been using it in many projects, mainly for doing animated GIF, and I'm always amazed by the fact that you can use a combination of a small microcontroller and a small screen to create absolutely amazing things. And I want to share with you my months of experience on how to properly configure the TFT SPI library so you understand how to do it and you avoid some problems with the configuration. If we look at the official repository, we can see that the library supports many microcontrollers on different protocols, SPI, Parallel, and DMA is even supported on some microcontroller. And it also supports different types of display, different display controllers. And this combination of microcontrollers and different types of displays makes the uh, TFT SPI library quite hard to, con to configure and more so for beginners. Now it's important that you understand where the TFT SPI library is installed on your computer in order to configure it. If we look into the Arduino IDE, I have already installed the TFT SPI library on my computer. And the sketch you're seeing is a very basic simple sketch that displays an animated GIF on a small round screen that is 240 by 240 pixels. Now by default, the Arduino IDE creates an Arduino folder in your documents folder. So if you go into your documents folder, you're going to see an Arduino folder and inside it, a libraries folder. And inside that libraries folder, you will see all the libraries that you have installed through the Arduino IDE. And we can find the TFT SPI library there. And if we look inside, we see several files that are needed when you compile your sketch that is using the library. So the way the library works to configure it with your microcontroller and the display you want to connect with it is through user setups. So in the library folder, we have a folder called user setups. And inside it, we have dozens of files representing such configuration, microcontroller and display types. So the first thing you need to do is to find the right user setup to use based on your project. Again, meaning the microcontroller you're using and the kind of display you want to connect to your microcontroller. And there is brief descriptions that we can look at in the Arduino IDE. So here in my sketch, I have the main header file of the library. And if I right click on it and go to definition, and in that file, I'll go a little bit lower, there's a user setup select header file. Right click on it, go to definition, and we will find all the brief description for the dozen of user setup files that we saw in the library folder. So basically, the brief description follows always all the same pattern. You have the microcontroller and you have the type of display. And sometimes you, are, you also have the screen size that is supported. You have to find the right user setup based on your project. And the way I'm using this file is to search for the display controller name of my screen. And in my case, I'm using a small round screen that is using the, the display controller GC9A01. So I search in that file the GC9A01 display controller name. And there are several, actually several user setup files for this specific display controller. For example, here there's a Chow microcontroller file for the 240 by 240 pixels round screen. And you have many others, for example, here for an ESP32S3 on the DDGO uh, board. And the one I'm looking for is because I'm using a very simple ESP32 microcontroller with my round screen, I want to use this setup file for my project. 
Now there is one important thing to know about this file. This is the main configuration file. Below this line and above this and if you have to have just one other file that is uncommented, that is active for your project. So if I look up here, almost all of them are uncommented by default when you install the library. And there is this generic one with, which is uncommented and it's a very basic one. So my advice is do not use that generic setup file. You have to find a, a setup based on your configuration below. So we have to comment that generic setup file, but you cannot do it in the Arduino IDE. If I try to comment it, the Arduino IDE says that it's, it's in read-only mode. That's because the Arduino IDE prevents you to, uh, uh, to change any file that are outside your project, outside your sketch. So to do it, you have to use Notepad. And if you go back into the library, we have to modify this user setup header file. So I double click on it to open Notepad. And here I can comment this line, which is the generic setup that uh, I advise you not to use. And I'm going to uncomment the setup 200, which is the setup file that I want to use for my project using the round screen. I will save that and I can go back in the Arduino IDE and I see that the generic header file is commented and the setup 200 is uncommented, the one that I want to use and, and there's no other files uncommented, no other header files uncommented. If you have more than one header file uncommented, uh, the, your project won't compile or the display won't work. So since this header file is uncommented, when you compile your sketch, it's going to use that setup file. If we go look into this setup file, so all of the setup files have almost all the same information. So that's the default settings that is provided by the library. And it always starts with the display controller to use. So in my case, it's the GC9A01 uh, display controller. And after that, you have the pin definitions, the default pin definitions provided by the library. So if you wire your screen on your microcontroller using this default pins, you don't have to change anything in the setup. And later in the video, I will show you how to change this pin definition if you want to use other pins. And you have font uh, defines, default font defines. I never change these. And you have the SPI frequency that you can modify. I have wired my screen on the SP32 using this default pin, so I don't have to change anything. So again, in my user setup, I have my, my setup uncommented, the setup that I want to use. I will compile my project and it's going to use that setup to compile the project. Now that it's compiled, I can upload it to my microcontroller. So here it is, we see BB-8 running on the, on the small screen. It's a very simple animated GIF that I made using Adobe After Effects. And if you want to use that sketch, I've put the link in the, the video description so you can get the sketch and also the, uh, the animated GIF of BB-8. Let's say, for example, that in my project, pin 7 is not available. I'm using it, for example, for another thing. And I want to use another pin for the chip select. Let's say I want to use pin 6 for the chip select pin. So I cannot edit it in the Arduino IDE. I have to go back into the library folder, into user setup, open the setup 200 file. So it's this one. I open it in notepad. And here I can change the chip select pin to pin 6. Just put a comment here change to pin 6 and you can change anything in that setup file uh, any other pins if you want to use for example another pin for the 
uh, clock pin, pin 14, you can do it, but you have to do it in Notepad. So I'm going to close that file, save it, and here I can see that my, my chip select pin is now using pin 6. Now the problem with this is if you, if the library, if the TFT ESPI library gets updated, or if you uninstall the library and reinstall it, you're going to lose these changes because these files are provided by the library. So every time you change, you update the library, uh, it will override the changes that you've made uh, in that file. So let's, let's update the library to see that uh, occurring. So here I have an older version of the library. I will update it. So it's going to update my library. So now it's installed. And if I go back into the header file, Okay, so now that it's open, if I go back to the user setup select, you see that the changes I had made comment the user setup. It's now again uncommented because I've, I've updated the library. And it's the same thing for a setup 200, which is now commented. So I have to go back into the library and open the user setup select comment this file and uncomment the setup 200. I'm going to save it. Now my setup 200 is now uncommented. I can go into it and you see that my the pin 6 that I that I had defined earlier is now gone. It has been overwritten by the default library settings. So in order to avoid your changes that you made to a setup being overwritten by reinstalling the library or the library gets updated by the Arduino IDE. In the official repository at the end, there's a tips section where the maintainer explain how to avoid that problem. The maintainer says that we have to create a new folder in the Arduino library folder called TFT ESPI setups and place our setups in that folder. So we're going to do just that. So at the root of the library folder, I will create a new folder called TFT ESPI setups. And I'm going to copy my actual file that I need for my project, my, the setup file. So I will go copy it in user setup. So it's setup 200. So I'm going to copy it, control C, go back to the library root in the TFT ESPI setups that I've created, paste the setup there. So now I can safely change this setup file. Let's say I want to change again my pin, my chip select pin to pin six. I will close it, save it. So now what I have to do is in the user's setup select file, I need to include that specific setup. So we're going to do that. So I'm going into Notepad because I cannot do it in the Arduino IDE. Let's go back to the library, open the user setup select. So I'm going to first comment this line because I don't want to use that setup that is inside the library. I want to use the new one that I've pasted in the TFT SPI setups. So let's paste that include. And I will put it here, right there. And let's paste the name of the setup so I don't misspell it. I'm going into the TFT SPI setups. Paste the name and put it there. So now when I compile the project, it's going to use that setup file, which is outside the library. So it will not be overwritten. If I go into the Arduino IDE and I go into user setup select. So I did not save the file. Let's save it. So now it's using only this new include and I can even go peek at the definition so we can see that I have my pin 6 defined so I can use pin 6 as my new chip select pin 
as any other pins that, I, that you want to change based on your microcontroller. All right, now let's go back into the library manager and let's remove the TFT SPI library to look what's happening in the library folder. So I will un uninstall it. So it's uninstalled. And if I go back into the library folder, the TFT SPI library has been removed, but my setups are still there. And if I reinstall the TFT ESPI library, it will reinstall it with all the default setup files. So it's, it's here. So the only thing I have to do is again, go to the user setup select, comment the generic setup file and include my own setup file that is outside the library. I will save it. And if I look into the TFT SPI header file, So it's the only other file that you have to change to use the setup that you copied outside the library. And you can even rename this file, for example, to know which project it belongs to. For example, I could rename this file to PB8 animation. So I can use that name instead of a very generic one. So I know that this setup file, when I look into my folder, I know that it's for the project BB-8 animation. So as long as you follow the tips I showed you during the video, so selecting the right setup file, putting it outside the library folder to protect it against um, updates from the library or removing and reins reinstalling the library, then your setup will be protected and you can rename them based on your project so you can find them later and just modify the user setup select header file. If you found this video helpful, please give a like to the video and thanks for watching guys.